What's up guys, yes today, rig rundown. I thought I would take you through some of the gear that I have. Guitars, talk through the amps, strings, picks, all the good stuff. Uh, and have a bit of fun with it. So, uh, I have to get all the guitars out there. There's not that many guitars actually. But I'll get them out, talk you through it. Let's have some fun. Ting. I was thinking of moving the camera, I thought fuck it, it could just stay there. Uh, let's start with this bad boy, this is one you've probably seen a lot of lately. Right here. This is a Gibson 120th anniversary. Um, super special guitar, some of you know the turmoil I went through with this guitar. Trying to put the James Hetfield EMGs in it, absolutely kicked my ass. Uh, but it is easily one of my favourite guitars. Obviously, we've stuck some Ernie Ball stuff on the back. It's naturally. Um, but absolutely great guitar. For all your fast, riffy stuff, this is just like super cool. I love playing a lot of my Metallica stuff on this nowadays. Uh, it's just a beast. And it's really surprisingly quite light compared to another guitar that we'll be getting onto. But it's surprisingly light, but the, the, the output and the power and the pure tone this thing puts out is amazing, uh, especially now with the EMG headset in there. Uh, the stock pickups were really good. I think I still have them in the case, maybe. I don't know. Uh, they were quite good, but they just weren't for me. I needed a little bit more oomph. And uh, the headset works really well with this guitar. Now, the story is we've got two volumes and there's a knob missing. <laughs> and under the scratch plate here in this hole, you can see the battery for the pickups. The cavity in here is so small um, that I thought, well, let's just get rid of the tone pot because I don't use the tone anyway. So fuck that off. Uh, so it made a little bit more space for the battery, even though it's still extremely cramped in there. But volume, volume, three-way switch, boom. What more do you need? It's pretty dinged up. It's got a lot of scratches. Um, I repositioned the strap button from here right on the end, if you're familiar with Vs to a little bit more further in, just so it feels like I'm getting more of a cuddle when I'm playing. Um, just feels more natural and comfortable for me. That was, that was daunting, because I remember drilling a hole to change the location of the strap button. And uh, yeah, it was, it was very painful. But there's like dents, there's scratches, you know, all back here. I think I stabbed a screwdriver into it once, because why not? But it just gets absolutely battered, and in a good way. And it sounds awesome. You've obviously heard it a lot in the covers and a lot of videos lately. Uh, Gibson, 120th anniversary. Flying V. V power, motherfuckers. So moving on to another guitar that uh, is very familiar. That came to me for a project. I was gifted it from a very good friend who, at the time, was working for Ernie Ball and helping me out with all my strings and all that stuff. And uh, they gifted me a guitar for a project to kind of do it up and mod it. But the more I played it, the more I thought, this guitar just sounds awesome as it is. So I kind of never changed anything on it. And that is this. The Sterling by Music Man Axis. Um, I had an option between white or black. I went with white because I had a lot of black guitars at the time. And why it's just cool. So the plan was to just put new pickups in it and mod it, but it just sounds good as it is because I'm obviously so used to everything I have, I think, has EMGs in. <laughs> so I was like, I kind of want something different, something with that kind of more passive vibe. And uh, it sounds really good. Five way switch, one, two, three, four, five, yep. Volume, volume. It's got a widdly, widdly bar which is fun, um, but overall an absolutely amazing guitar. Um, and obviously, early ball sticker on the back. Uh, super cool. Uh, I think I've got a couple videos using this. Um, I'm gonna put some new strings on it and probably bust it out again, but it's really good. It's really light, it's small. Um, feels good, nice neck, not too chunky. Uh, definitely good for some of those bendy bendy leady stuff it just looks awesome right now here we are this is one of my ultimate specials um, that you would have seen a lot on the channel um, for those of you who have followed me and kind of know me 
I've always been into my country music. Um, never used to like it, but then one day I was like, wow, this is good. And uh, I always wanted uh, an acoustic, because I love playing acoustic guitar. It's just a different vibe. It takes you to a different place. And this is the uh, Sigma SG200J. So jumbo body, so it's nice, big, huge tone, really deep and rich. And it just speaks country music. If, if you've been following me, you've seen the stuff I've played on this. And uh, it's just great. Acoustic guitar takes me to a different place. You know, all the loud, heavy, riffy stuff is good. But sometimes it's good to slow it down, take it down a few levels. And just all you need is, is three chords and a cold beer. That's all you need. Okay, okay, so now moving on to a guitar that... Probably isn't really my style, but again, this was gifted to me from a very good friend, Bevan. If you've seen him on the channel, you know who Bevan is. Bevan is the guy that I do all my fuck around jams with and something beautiful always happens. Um, and this is this right here. This is a Hofner Contemporary Series, whatever the fuck that means. Um, story of this guitar, me and Bevan have been friends for God knows a very long time, me going back to school days. And he had a band and uh, I was kind of like his roadie, I'd bring his guitar on stage for him and help set up and all that cool stuff, do sound checks and uh, this was one of the guitars. And uh, as of recently, he, uh, he gifted it to me and I'll be honest, it's a super thin body guitar. Very different, very big bodied, but mate, for some of that kind of like Gary Moore, David Gilmore kind of soloing, it's absolutely awesome. There's a few videos somewhere on the channel of me using this, but it's just great. It's super light, like you could throw this thing around, but very meaningful. Three way switch, two volume, two tone, couple of F holes, really beautiful finish. Thing sounds awesome, honestly, like it's just, it's just stunning. Okay, so now let's move on to a guitar. It's probably my my favourite, the most special one to me. You can probably guess. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Whoa! -ho -ho. So some of you are familiar with the story of this. If you're not familiar with the story, here's the story. This is the Chug V by a company called Granger Guitars. Ownable stickers, obviously. So I met Granger Guitars at a guitar show a long time ago and we got in the talks of a signature guitar. Now here's the story, I wanted another Flying V. Everything on the market was just rubbish. Wasn't feeling it. I like the old kind of Gibson style Vs, but I wanted something a little bit more metal. Uh, then I came up with this design. Single pickup, EMG 81X, very much based on the traditional kind of Gibson V, white scratch plate, one volume, input, <laughs> and then the chug inlay, uh, mother of pearl, and I thought it's just, it's just quite fitting for a lot of the stuff I do around here and how I play, uh, super chug, and uh, custom Matt the Rift Master truss rod cover, and uh, you've heard this thing in action. Now this thing compared to the Gibson, uh, this is a chunk of wood, this is heavy. This guitar is insanely heavy, it's just a solid hunk of wood. But it comes through in the tone, uh, the EMG 81X as well. So much output and just like balls to it. It's like the EMG 81, but on steroids. Go check out Granger Guitars, they make some absolutely stunning works of art when it comes to guitars. This isn't typically their standard kind of stock model they make, but they were kind enough to do this design for me and they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Neck through as well, which is what I like. Locking tuners, absolute machine. Right, so next guitar up has also got a story. Um, my brother bought this guitar because he wanted to start playing guitar, but he never really got into it. So he was like, bro, you have it. And I was like, shit, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's an absolute beast. It's the Epiphone SG G400 in natural brown, natural finish. Very Sabbath. Um, I did t take the pickups out and put uh, an EMG81 in the bridge. And then as of recently, I swapped it out for a headset. 
uh, which isn't actually currently functioning. I need to take it to a tech because I fucked up somewhere. Um, <laughs> but great guitar, super cheap as well. It's like 140 quid or 240 quid, something like that. And it's just amazing. I've done a few covers with it, some bowl beat stuff, a few videos, and uh, it's just good. So I think once I get these properly installed, it's gonna be even better. Um, but I did just have the one EMG 81 in the bridge. Cause like, what more do you need, huh? Uh, super good, affordable, sounds great, plays great. This thing came completely perfectly set up and in tune, which was awesome. So yeah, Epiphone SG G400. So that's pretty much my main guitars, all the ones that are kind of like usable, minus that SG at the minute, but i got a few more. I'll show you one that's got a story that someone will understand. And that is this piece of shit. Um, so the story for this, I got this when I was so young from my parents for Christmas. When I first kind of was really getting into guitar. It's by a company called Nevada. I saw it and at the time I was really into my Zach Wilde. And uh, I bought some Zach Wilde EMGs, put it in. And uh, I took this thing to college, man. This got, this got me through loads of college band practices, college gigs, loads of cool jamming. And then one day I decided to set it on fire. Because <laughs> I thought, hey, I'm on YouTube now. I've got to burn something. And uh, I set fire to it. <laughs> so it's just covered. And like all the pickup rings are melted. The bindings all melted. It's dusty. But I keep it because it, it's, a, it's good memories. It tells a good story. Uh, but with, when I put the EMGs in this, it actually sounded awesome. For like a cheap copy piece of shit, it sounded really good. So I think that'll probably do for the guitars. Um, you get the picture. So, let's move on to amplification now. Ah. Okay, so as far as amps go, you know what I'm about. It's all about a black star, yeah? And as you can see, I've got a monumental amount of them right here. So I'll quickly whiz through them uh, before my battery dies, because I am a professional. So, down here at the bottom is the, uh, the Black Star Series 1 6L6 loaded, 100 watt head. Absolutely stunning, stunning amp. This is the second one I've actually ever owned because I had one, sold it because I'm a dick. Then I needed it back. So I did get another one and that's kind of like the main one that I use in, on the channel in the videos because uh, it just delivers, man. And that's matched with the 2x12 Series 1 cabinet below it. Then sitting on top, of that is the ID TVP, which is True Valve Power, um, amp which is was designed to be as loud as Valve. That was my first ever Black Star amp, and I'll be honest, it's fucking awesome. I remember plugging into it, I hit one open E, and I was like, "That's it, that's the one." And from then on, my whole journey for amps has just been Black Star, Black Star, Black Star. Uh, there's so much going on with the TVP. You got different voicings like overdrives, crunch, super crunch, warm clean, bright clean. You got different valve voicings like KT88, 6L6, EL34s, and it's just got built in modular effects like your chorus, your, you've got delays, you've got some reverbs, all the good stuff. So there's loads of it, loads in there to satisfy any guitar player's needs, whatever it is you play. Then on top of that is the Blackstar HT Metal 5 watt head with, with the snake skin outline because I'm that fucking cool. I saw it in a guitar store and I was like, well, I've got to have it, surely. So I bought it and I used that one for many years after I got rid of my first Series 1. I used the HT5 Metal for a long time. I did have the 100 watt head version at one point, which is now in Derby, I believe. But the HT5, man, it's got plenty in there to kick you right in the groin. Um, super cool tone, loads of my older covers um, I used with that. Five watts of just pure doom. It's valve as well, so it was loud and just kicked it and was awesome. Really great. Little amp. So if I spin you around a little bit, this one here is the 10 year anniversary Series 1 Black Star combo. Uh, it's a 10 watt Series 1, so based on the Series 1 range. Uh, but this was bought out for the 10 year anniversary of Black Star, so it was a very special time, special occasion. 
and I thought I've got to have one. Sounds awesome, great tones, great cleans, heavies, all the cool stuff, um, and it sits there and looks pretty. Covered in skulls and Ernie Ball. Shout out Black Star. So that's pretty much all the amps. Um, but the, the Series 100 watt head is the one that gets mainly used more than anything. And I think as far as strings go, it's, there's no there's no question. It's it's Ernie Ball. Um, they're everywhere. I've still got a pack of the Hetfield strings back there. But for me, it's always been Ernie Ball. Super happy to be an artist of Ernie Ball and to be part of the family. They've helped me out. They've hooked me up whenever I need strings to, to make noise. Um, so yeah, Ernie Ball, loads of different gauges, mainly the regular slinkies, you've got the power slinkies, beefy slinkies, the fucking, them ones, 10 to 52 paradigms, uh, all over the place, so, hashtag I play slinky, motherfuckers. And if you want to touch on guitar picks, uh, these are the ones I'm currently using, the 1.14, aha, yeah, but the Ernie Ball, 1.14s. They're solid, they've got enough give on it as well, so it's not like playing with a stone. Um, but they feel good. Um, again, Ernie Ball, just built to perfection. It's a nice kind of grip to them as well, which is awesome. Wow, 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 there we go. I think that's pretty much it. Um, pedals. I've only really got a, a tube screamer. That's about it. Really use pedals other than the tube screamer occasionally um, but yeah those are all my guitars well pretty much all of them the functioning ones the stories the amps for anybody that was curious or maybe no one gives a fuck but okay so guys I hope you enjoyed it comment down below let me know list your rig what's your what's your like main guitars what amps you use in picks list them all below and we can have like some gear chat with everyone and get involved if you're new, hit the goddamn subscribe button. Okay? Thanks. As always, rock out, be awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Whatever that may be. Uh, go check out the previous one, too. Tough riff. Um, rock out, be awesome. See ya!